Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I am making this video to document um, my process and celebrate my productivity for last year. 2022 was definitely my most productive year knitting wise. And I've seen a lot of people make these videos and I really enjoy them. So I'm jumping on the bandwagon even though I know I'm a little late to the party. I don't claim to be any sort of expert when it comes to yarn or yarn work. I learned how to knit when I was a teenager in order to do a, a nipple sweater for an art project and I didn't actually pick it up again until the start of lockdown. I feel like since uh, lockdown I've learned a whole lot and it does really show in my 2022 collection. There are like pieces in there that even like surprises me and I'm like wow okay I can do that now and I'd like to share those with you guys. I know that not everyone like cares about knitting and crocheting so I thought that I'd put this out here for people who share my uh, interests and passions to give me feedback and maybe even get inspired or lovingly judge my <laughs> choices in yarn. <laughs> now the first sweater is a bit of a cheeky addition to this video because I didn't actually start this last year. I started knitting this in 2021 but I did finish it in 2022 so I thought I'd include it just to see what kind of level I started 2022 on to like have an accurate accurate representation of the progress of the pieces. This is a hundred percent acrylic sweater. I really like how it looks. I think it is like a super neat sweater However, because it is 100% acrylic, even though it doesn't get super warm, it still traps a lot of moisture. So it is a bit sweaty to wear. It's also very heavy, um, especially with like all the, the, cable knit, uh, the cable knitting. I feel like that makes it a bit heavier. It wasn't actually that hard to knit. Um, it is my first full sweater. However, I have done cable knitting before on a vest, but it turned out really great. I think the detailing on it is super nice. And I wish at the time I'd known a little more about yarn because picking the 100% acrylic was definitely just a like budget choice, but I didn't even like stick to the yarns recommended in the pattern like it's just a luck that the sizing hasn't turned up like turned up completely off because i knew nothing about yarn weights or yarn types or gauge at the time i just kind of winged it and was like well this yarn is cheap and an okay color so it looks great it doesn't feel great so it kind of just lives in my closet and um that mistake is gonna be a bit of trend in the collection and is one of the things that I want to improve on moving forward. So in 2022, I, like everyone else, wanted to knit a balaclava. So I knit three of them. Um, this was because I couldn't decide on a color. Uh, this is uh, based on a tutorial by Defra Knits. I'll put the link to the tutorial in the description of the video. I love how these turned out. These are so pretty. The yarn I used for this is um, King Splash. Uh, it is also 100% acrylic and it's in the colors of Parma Violet, Denim and Chestnut. And I just love the way this yarn knits up, like the color work on it, like the color changing with the splashes, like the spots of pink in, in this blue as well. Like just this purples to die for. I think this really like started a love I had this year of color changing yarn, like color changing yarns. 
um, and just having like little specks in there. Uh, even though this is 100% acrylic, I actually really like them and they're really like soft. It's just like a very nice balaclava. One thing I did add to the first one was a, uh, a ripped border. And I didn't add the, to the, the two other ones I knit because I felt like it came a little bit close to the face, um, which kind of gave me that like uh, kindergarten child look. Like I used to wear these uh, and all children in like Scandinavia wear these when we're outside playing. And um, this one in particular makes me look a bit like a toddler. I don't wear them too much, not because I don't love them. I really do love how they look. However, I do get bullied quite a lot uh, <laughs> by like my siblings and my boyfriend for wearing them. Um, but come next, next winter, I'm gonna like man up and be confident about it and wear them. Like I live in London. And I feel like that's like one of the cities where you can just wear whatever you want and people aren't gonna pay you too much mind because like there's so many different types of people here, uh, different styles. So um, yeah, no, I'm really happy with these color wise, look wise, gauge wise. Um, so that was a really good like first fully like started and finished project of 2022. For the following project of 2022, I really wanted to challenge myself and make something that I haven't done before. I've made like a lot of tops and accessories, but I've never made like, like knitted any bottoms. So I decided to knit a pair of pants. These are the Boring Biker Pants by Boring Knits. Um, this pattern was super fun. Like it was, very long and kind of like a lot of the same because obviously you need to like knit two whole legs. Um, but it was like very therapeutic and I enjoyed the process and I did learn like a lot of, a lot of new stuff on it, like German short rows for, for the bottom to like make space for the booty. And um, like the elastic, like knitting in the elastic waistband and yeah, it just turned out really neat. I love the color. This is a uh, Mayflower Cotton Merino in the color Myrtle. It is a four ply yarn weight, 50% um, superwash, uh, virgin superwash wool and 50% cotton. As you can see, they're a bit crinkled. Uh, it's because they mostly just live in my closet as well. Not because I'm not like, loving the finished product of this and it does feel good to wear. However, I think I made the mistake of, um, first of all, I used half a millimeter size needle larger than the pattern called for because I didn't have the exact needle. Um, and I thought that was gonna be fine. But I also think I could have knitted it a size bigger. I think I went for a small when I probably should have done a medium because now that the stitch size is a bit bigger than it's meant to be and it stretches probably a little more than it's meant to it means you can see my underwear um, from the back when I'm wearing it it becomes like a little more transparent than it like is on the the images of the model wearing it on the pattern so uh, that's definitely I think a fault on my side and not the pattern and I should probably just get like a pair of um, like skin colored shorts to wear underneath and it'd be fine. And I really do want to like wear this more when spring comes because it's like such a nice color. And I just like love the, love the look of like knitted pants. So yeah, really satisfied with this project. I was really impressed with myself for uh, technically pulling it off. I just wish I hadn't taken the liberties <laughs> that I had with it. Now, I don't know if I am just bad at calculating or it's because I used a different yarn than what it said to do in the pattern. I tried to like match the details and the yarn weight uh, and like the dimensions of it perfectly. However, the pattern for the 
boring biker pants didn't have an exact amount of skeins mentioned that you should buy. It had like like amount of grams of the yarn. So I had to go in and calculate myself and I must have just been way off because when I finished the biker pants, I had like half of the yarn I bought for the left. Um, so I had to kind of just like wing a project and I figured maybe I'd ma make a matching top for it. This top isn't based on any specific pattern. Uh, I did just base the, the straps and the neck area of a, a free pattern I just found online. Um, but really anything below is just kind of um, improvised. And I thought I'd try to make something that's like frilly. I thought that would be fun. Um, and that ended up taking much longer than I thought. Like this looks like it wouldn't take a long time to like knit up, but because of the frills, um, down here it's actually like, um, like the circumference is like four times longer than it is up here. So the frill itself took so long that I got like really bored and irritated with it. I think that the finished product looks really good on the hanger. I don't think it suits me. I don't wear it a lot because I don't like the way it looks on me. I think this would look adorable on the right person. I am not that person. Uh, so I might, I might sell this or give it to someone. Yes, so even though this is like meant to match the pants, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear it with it. Um, but I do think that it's still a successful project. It's just not my style. So following all the knitting, I thought I'd try myself at crocheting. I think there's a lot of possibilities with crocheting and it's like a little more freehand. The first project I did for crocheting was this halter top. You can find a ton of YouTube, YouTube tutorials on how to make like crocheted halter tops, halter necks, uh, sorry. And um, the one I used was uh, by Marches Den. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm gonna put a link in the, the description for that one as well. The yarn I used for this is uh, Hobby uh, Universe in the color Pollux. It is like 98% acrylic, like 2% polyester. This project I actually didn't buy the yarn for. I was in Denmark and in the Hobby store and I found like this skein of yarn and I just thought that the color was so like adorable and toasty and it has like little glitter specks in there. I don't know if you can see it in the light. Um, but I just thought it was so great and that's actually I think the first project I made where I bought the yarn and then came up with a project for the yarn. I think it suits my hair color really well. Oh. <laughs> it likes my hair as well. I think this turned out really great. One thing I would have done differently, the straps, because uh, initially I followed the tutorial one-to-one -one and I attached the chest bits uh, to the main body and then I put it on and I realized it was very revealing. There was a lot of um, tasteful side boob, a uh, little more than I'd care for. So what I did is just, I added like three more rows um, on each of them on the side, but that made the straps for binding behind the neck uh, much thicker than they were before. And like the combo of the thickness of this uh, like square strap and the color changing yarn um, kind of looks like big slices of bacon. If I were to knit this again, I'd like do the cups for longer before I started moving all the way up the straps. So I don't have such like thick pieces of bacon straps <laughs> sitting down my neck. Otherwise, I'm really pleased with how this looks and I look forward to somewhere coming back around so I can start wearing it again. This next project is another pair of like bottoms. It is a skirt. And this skirt doesn't have a pattern. It's actually a 
pattern I made myself based off like some Pinterest pictures I liked and I'm really proud of it and how it turned out. I definitely took a lot of the things I learned during the boring biker pants with me. Um, when doing this, like it has an elastic, knitted in elastic waistband and I used uh, German short rows um, to make sure that it had that fit of the bottom on the back. So it's not just tubular, it's actually like shaped and to fit like front and back. And it, I really enjoy this slip detail that I did with uh, it like bottoms buttons all the way down so it can be as fun as you want it to be. Um, and this is my first experience doing any sort of button work. So I think <laughs> I redid these buttonholes like three times. Um, because initially I made them so small, I couldn't even tell what was a stitch and what was a buttonhole. And then I made them like way too loose. And when you're wearing something like on your thighs, um, it will try to like split open. Uh, so if your buttonholes aren't tight enough, it'll just go woo. This project actually got me kind of into wanting to try and make uh, patterns because um, I really love this. And I thought that uh, other p people might love this. Um, the only thing keeping me back is that I can look or come up with a garment and eventually figure out how to um, make it so that it would fit myself because I can measure myself and I can do trial and error. But I really want to make stuff that is size inclusive. So if anyone out there has any resources or courses or tips on how to um, calculate for different sizes to like size up and size down I'd really appreciate that and if I could figure that out I might make this into a pattern because I get a lot of wear out of this and I really love how it looks especially with the with the color changing and uh, also this the yarn I use for this is Yabu Cookie it is in the color uh, Nostalgic and it is um, like super lovely. I love these colors. It's very like 70s or like 90s, your, <laughs> your grandma's furniture. Oh no. Camera. Do you want to up? No, I just absolutely love this. It even fits the fits the vest, doesn't it? <laughs> no, yeah. So I am I'm very proud of this one. So the following knit I did is my knitting Magnus Opus. I didn't use any patterns for it as well, like the skirt. Uh, it is purely based off like. I saw the same thing, saving the same thing on Pinterest over and over again. You know, like those diagonal cardigans um, that are like super cute. I looked it up, they're super expensive. So I was like, no way, I can make that. Um, and I did, and I am so proud of it. This is also in Yerba Cookie in the color Bohemian. Um, so it's also 100% acrylic and I am so impressed with myself for pulling this off. This looks great on as well, and it is exactly what I wanted it to be. It goes down here diagonally um, with the buttons, so it was very nice that I had the button experience from the skirt uh, that really helped me not having to remake this like 10 times. Uh, but it turned out like super great. It's really cute. You can see up here, it like um, connects from the shoulder and it's sewn together. So it's not a traditional cardigan where you can like open it fully in that sense. Worst case scenario where they pop open and you're outside, it's actually not just gonna burst open. It's like kept together up here in safety. So it would just be like a little risky, um, but it is so cute. 
uh, one thing I would do differently. I don't know if you can see here in the shoulders how it's like sewn together. I may have ended the sleeves uh, a bit square. I, I started the sleeves from like the bottom up. It, it just connects like a tiny bit weird. And if I was to do it again, I might do a different, like a different yarn as well. Maybe like a more lightweight yarn, maybe like even mohair. Um, that could be really cute. Uh, just because this is 100% acrylic and uh, is also a case of me again buying the yarns and then coming up with a project for it. I actually bought like three big skeins of uh, Yarabo just because I got, like I said earlier, I got really into color changing yarns and I thought they were like so good looking. So um, I bought several of them and I got inspired to do this cardigan. I do think it still feels nice. It might be a little more sweaty than it has to be, but it's not heavy or anything. Like it feels good and it looks good. And um, this is another case of me really wanting to make a pattern out of it. Cause I love how this looks. And I think a lot of people are into like diagonal cardigans. And since it's like my original design, for a diagonal cardigan, I would love to like have the opportunity for other people to like knit the same thing because I love it. If I was to make a pattern out of it, I probably would make it for a different yarn type so people don't have to wear acrylic. But I am still very proud. This is my proudest little baby <laughs> and I love her. So uh, the next project is still a whip. I, like many others, probably like unintentionally put things down whenever there's like a bump in the road. I had to reorder some more yarn and while I was waiting for the yarn, because I'm so impatient, I started new projects and because I put this one down, I just haven't picked it back up again. Also because it was like a bigger project and more time consuming, so it's really hard to return to. Uh, but it's this vest. I decided to make this because I'd ordered yarn for a scarf and I still didn't really know that much about like different yarn weights. So I ordered these yarns in like two ply yarn weight. This is Hobby Rainbow Cotton and it was just way too small to do any sort of scarf. Even for this, I've actually, I've done um, double thread. So it's more like a four ply. Um, but yeah, I'd ordered all these colors, so I had to come up with a project uh, that would use all of these colors. And I was inspired by this, um, this vest on Pinterest. So I decided that I would try to like hack my way through one. And it's taken quite a lot of time and trial and error to try to like get things to fit up here because I've seen a lot of people do granny square west vests where it's kind of like straightforward like oh i have square here square here square here square here square here but i wanted it to like shape like a, a piece of like professional garment wood as you can see like some of these aren't exactly like perfect squares um they have little bits in and out up here as well like i avoided corners so that was a bit of like trial and error trying to like shave those. I think I like picked these up at one point because I'd like done something wrong. You can see up here, it's not very, I've like knitted little, not knitted, <laughs> crocheted. I've crocheted up like rows to like try shape and compensate for where you wouldn't naturally fit a square. Same thing in here for like the V and up here. And I'll try to get like that like slant of the shoulders so it doesn't sit like a box. It's still a work in progress. I've done one ripped sleeve, um, which obviously I'm gonna do on the other side. And then I'm gonna add it here to the neck, like V-neck as well. And to the bottom of it, I got inspired to do a little piece for someone else. And we're gonna have to wear this and match. And that's actually, I did finish that product because it's a smaller product and it had like a shorter turnaround. And that actually turned out really great. Ta-da! I made a vest for my puppy so that we can match. 
Look at that. It's a bit dirty because honestly, out of anything I've knitted, this has had the most wear out of it. This was a really fun thing to knit up. Uh, having to like trial and error around the <laughs> on the dog, like measure her, putting it on. She's a very patient puppy though, so uh, she did very well. Uh, here's like the opening for her front legs and she got like a ripped neckline. She's a, a, a crossbreed but doesn't have any like undercoat and it got really cold for winter so this was perfect for keeping her warm and she looks so cute in it. And uh, now we fit together like a, like a very bushy pair of like me and my dog and our vests. No, it's, it's really cute and it was fun to make. And I might make like another YouTube video, like a tutorial on how to make this because it's not like a long project, especially if you're, you're an experienced crocheter. Uh, granny squares should be a piece of cake. If I was to do a change, maybe connect it underneath. Like, dog garments like are a bit different. Like some connect between the legs, some don't. Um, this is fine for the purpose. Maybe to like make it extra warm, you could put something underneath. But like, let me know if you have like any interest in learning how to do this and I might make a tutorial for it. So this is the scarf that I initially ordered all the yarn that I ended up using for the vests uh, for and um, I really like how it turned out. I didn't use any patterns for this. It was just inspired by whatever I pinned and I pinned a lot, like a lot of like striped and color blocked scarves. Um, this is in particular just like really inspired by this one scarf I saw. I did order like the same colors or like colors that were close to the colors in that scarf because I just kept pinning the same image over and over. I love how this turned out color wise. I still think that perhaps making this out of like cotton uh, wasn't the best option. I ended up ordering the same colors I ordered for the vest, but in Drops Paris, in like 10 ply uh, weight or Aran uh, yarn weight. And I it, think it like stretches a bit, like it it stretches, it's, it doesn't hold itself up. It kind of like has a lot of weight and gravity to it. But I do love the look of it. I still think it's a nice piece. And if you like make sure to like pull it around yourself a few times, it, it doesn't go too far down. I don't have like too much shebang and color in my wardrobe. So I think it's like a nice accented piece to wear with uh, like your outerwear when you're like wearing a kind of a muted and understated outfit underneath. It's super fun and um, a good bright winter slash like spring piece. Another really fun piece I thought would be perfect for winter it would be the Hat of, of Opportunities by uh, Laura Delgo Knit. Um, it's such a beautiful pattern. Uh, I actually made two of them. I made one for myself and one for my boyfriend. Um, I made my boyfriend's hat first because it uh, like it's more one of the more like expensive yarns that I bought so I wanted to like try it out on his first. So these were knitted in two strands, one in uh, Hobby Diablo in the colors light grey and natural white and in Mayflower New Sky uh, in the colors Volcano Grey and Natural and that's like an alpaca wool blend. Um, so they feel really great. Uh, and they look really great. Uh, the, I think it was good that I, um, like, started with not my own, um, because this, um, ripped bin is actually done in brioche, and I've never knitted that before. Um, so honestly, I picked this up, like, started and picked it apart, like, I think five times. 
and even then I still didn't get it right. As you can see, like it folded under. So eventually I was like, okay, I'm just gonna like persevere. Um, it's gotten a lot of use this, so I don't know if it's like super clear, but because it's a bit flat, but you can see here, there's like at least a centimeter of just like not brioche knitting. It's like just a mess. But then that just folds under. So I think it looks great. And this is probably the thing that has like the second most wear out of all the items because my boyfriend uses this all the time because it's freaking cold at the moment. Um, I'm so pleased with the one I did for myself. Uh, it's embroidered uh, based on one of the designs. So like the pattern comes with like three different designs and one of them includes like a chart for embroidering these insects and they are so freaking cute. Look at that. That is so good. Cute. Adorable. I love it. It's so good and it's fluffy and it's cozy and it's just like overall like a nice look. I really, I really enjoyed making these. Well, <laughs> after I got a hand of the brioche, I really enjoyed making these. Um, and I really enjoyed the like embroidery part. And I think I'm gonna like make more stuff that uses embroidery. Um, Cause this, this looks so great. And I really like the, the texture like contrast of having this like extremely fluffy white knit and then this like cotton like very neat embroidery uh, like in it and I am super pleased with this this might be like my number two or three like favorite thing that I've done ever I think this really taught me a lesson as well in like prioritizing good yarns even though like the yarn for this was more expensive um per skein than like what i've done for like a lot of other pieces but then it gets so much more wear when you're like pleased with the feel of it and it feels expensive and it feels long lasting and this is like a piece that i'll keep forever and i'll like use so much more than some of the other things that are just like 100 percent acrylic but like cheaper to make and i think in the long run you're gonna be happier or i will be happier um like you, spending more a budget on a thing that will be like a forever item or something that i'm really pleased with after the fact but to me knitting and crocheting is very much about like the process like enjoying the process the process and the satisfaction is satisfaction of having a finished product but like, if you're gonna go out and spend a lot of money on yarn regardless, might as well, like, put that money in there and then, like, use it as an investment for, like, sustainable, like, fashion that you will use and not just something that's, like, gonna clutter your closet. After I did the beanies, I was actually moving on to a project that wasn't for me, so I won't have the finished product here to like show you guys but i'm gonna make my sister send me some footage of what i made because it was actually a birthday present for her so she just sent me like this picture on pinterest and said can you do this <laughs> and i said i don't know i've never seen this stitch in my life um i think someone commented on it that it was like a puff daisy stitch and for the longest time I was looking into that and it didn't look right and that's because it's not actually that stitch. But like eventually I figured out what that stitch is. So I started like breaking down the image and uh, came up with a pattern for it. And it turned out super nice and it looks exactly like the image. And my sister's very pleased with it. I made two different ones and like I gave them different lengths. I think she uses the one that has like crossbody length more um I, but i made them in two different colors and i think they turned out so nice and i might make some for myself because they look great and they were really fun to make I'm, I'm, I'm in a dilemma here because i think it would be fun to make like a free tutorial and put it on youtube however i haven't been able to find 
the source, all like my search just like finds random like profiles that has print pinned this, but I don't think I find like I can find the original poster for this image anywhere. If someone is privately selling these, I don't want to mess up their business or step on their territory or like steal their design and share it willy nilly. Obviously, I'd never like do anything to profit of someone else's design, but I'm really pleased with this ba how this bag turned out. And my sister's really pleased with how it turned out. And I think a lot of people would like a bag like this. So if this is just like a bag someone owns and isn't trying to like make any sort of money on, then I would like to share the tutorial for how I made it, but I don't want to mess with anyone's business. So if anyone knows anything about the origin of this bag, uh, please put it like in the comments or let me know. And like, kind of just like let me know your stand on make like copying other people's design. Because obviously there's like a big problem like in the industry where bigger brands like Shein and other like mass production copies designs of like smaller designers and like copies their original work to sell for like a fraction of that money um, that should really be going to the original creator but what's your stand on like seeing other people's like stuff and getting inspired and making it for yourself um, because like I said, I won't, I wouldn't, I would never like make this and then start selling them. Um, but I thought it was a fun thing to make and a nice thing to have. So if I'm not stepping on anyone's toes, I'd like love to teach someone else how to make them. But yeah, overall super fun crochet project. I made this with paint box, yarn, uh, cotton, Aran in the colors taupe and pine green. So last finished project uh, on the rack and it is also a t cheeky inclusion because I did make this in 2022 however I put the finishing finishing touches on it after New Year's um, so I was <laughs> like I was kind of finished with this when I went like home for Christmas I went to visit my family in Denmark and spend the Christmas there uh, but I didn't manage to finish the the ripped uh, color until I got back. So mostly made in 2022. Uh, and I guess also my first project uh, finished in 2023. This is another project that I made in Yabo Cookie. It is in the color Romantic and it was the last of the uh, big skeins I bought when I was really in love with uh, color changing. Uh, yarn and I think this color is super cute um, again 100% acrylic um, but I was just kind of using up the rest of my uh, stash I've pinned a lot of like color changing sweaters and I really wanted a color changing sweater so this is mostly based off the pattern Monica by Sue Spellens however I did make some like modifications by like adding like ripped sleeves and a ripped neckline and just overall like adjusting some of the lengths to fit the dimensions I wanted and okay here's the thing I don't know if I'm doing something wrong but I feel like when I follow people's measurements on patterns it doesn't like fit me at all even if I'm like making like medium size patterns i feel like i follow like the length on on the body and on the arms and what it says and like it, i feel like it stops there and i have to continue beyond what it says in the pattern and even so i feel like it's still short i had to block this to like cover my arms and even then i feel like sometimes i like ha i have to pull on them to like make them fit and not just go up and um after blocking it because it's like stretched. I don't necessarily love how the body drapes on me. I love the colors of it. I don't know. It's a bit of like a 5 out of 10 for me. Um, like which isn't like the pattern's fault at all. Like I didn't, like I said, I like didn't follow the dimensions. I'm still wearing it. I've like worn it quite a few times even though I just finished it after New Year's. So that says a lot. I 
do have like one project left. It's a work in progress that I like left way back. I guess I like started this in the summer. This mess is meant to be like a dupe of one of those like Prada tote bags, beach bags, whatever you want to call it. And you can see I actually stopped like mid like square in here. Um, and oh my God, what a mess. Um, I don't, I, I think I just started another project and like I have such a hard time picking up projects if I don't finish them. Like if I stop mid project, I'll get passion for something else. And then I just have a really hard time going back to it, especially if you don't know where you're at. For this bag, I'm using a YouTube tutorial. However, the tutorial is in Korean. Um, so I'm using subtitles to try to like follow along. Uh, which makes it a bit harder to find where I stopped, especially since I stopped so abruptly. Like, I th I'm mid-row in this. Um, like, I really just straight up put this down and didn't pick it up again. It was also lying on the side of my, like, computer desk for ages, uh, which just cluttered up my workspace and, like, you see this kind of tumbleweed and you just, like, have a hard time getting back into it. However, I will finish this because this was expensive materials. This is Wool and the Gang's uh, Ra Ra Raffia uh, in the color Desert Palm. I've also got one in black that I'm meant to like do like the Prada embroidery um, on, which is like a whole, a whole ass scheme for just like a word. So I'm gonna have to do more of this sort of thing. Um, so I'm gonna, like, I'm just gonna have to, like, pick myself up and finish it. I'm gonna set myself a timeline, you know, like, before, before summer, I will have finished this, I swear. And now this is out in the world and I have to, like, hold myself to it. And, uh, you guys can hold me responsible as well. Like, hit me up a few times, like, hey, have you started the Prada bag again? Um, that would be very helpful because I am very bad at holding myself accountable. This this will look good once it once it's finished. It'll look expensive right now. It just kind of uh, I don't know. It looks like um it looks like my puppy got like a hold of like a beach hat or something. Um, but yeah, no, it was fun until I just put it down. Yeah, so that was all the projects I made in 2022, both the, all my finished product, uh, projects and my work in progress. Um, and just looking back on the overall year, I'm very proud of what I've made and I'm really excited to move forward in 2023 and make more stuff. Um, I've got baskets on baskets of like, more yarn <laughs> because I have a problem. And because of these pieces, I've like learned so much more about what I should and shouldn't use. So I think this year is gonna be even more productive and even better. And I think the stretch goal is to like produce a pattern. So if anyone has any um, tips or tricks or sources on that, like I said earlier, feel free to drop it here. Um, feel free to like give me feedback on any of this stuff. Um, let me know if you liked any of it. Uh, let me know if you didn't like any of it. Actually, don't let me know if you didn't like any of it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed showing it. And I think I'll make more content like this in the future. I'll definitely make something on what I'm gonna do with uh, my remaining massive stash. Uh, and like future plans. So keep an eye out for that. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one I make of these. Thank you very much. Bye. Pinned onto the dog. Hi, Zoom. <laughs> it was so good. <laughs>